everybody, Chris here from Project Option, and in today's options trading strategies video, we're going to talk about the covered strangle. So the covered strangle is a hybrid between a covered call and a short put, or you can interpret it as a short strangle combined with a stock position of 100 shares. So let's dive into the basic strategy characteristics of the covered strangle. So the covered strangle is a bullish strategy that combines the sale of a strangle with the purchase of 100 shares of stock. Now another way to interpret the strategy is the combination of a covered call and a short put, which are both bullish strategies. Now to calculate the maximum profit potential on a covered strangle, you can take the call strike price, subtract the stock purchase price, and add the strangle credit to that and then multiply that by 100. So that basically gives us the the maximum profit on our shares, which is the difference between the short call strike and the stock purchase price, plus the max profit of the strangle times 100. Now the maximum loss potential is the combination of the maximum loss on the shares and the maximum loss on the short put. Now the short put maximum loss is going to be the short put strike minus the strangle credit, and then you can add the stock purchase price to that and multiply that by 100 to get the overall max loss of the covered strangle. So the, if the stock price goes to zero, you're going to lose the entire stock purchase price and you're going to lose the entire amount of the short put strike price less the, uh, less the strangle credit since we're collecting a premium for that. Now the expiration break even price is the stock purchase price minus the strangle credit. Now the estimated probability of profit on this trade is greater than 50% because we're collecting a credit which lowers the break-even of our long stock. Now the resulting position after expiration depends on if the short call or short put is in the money. If the short call is in the money, then the long shares will essentially be called away because the assignment of the short call results in selling 100 shares of stock at the call's strike price. So since we already own 100 shares of stock, we'll effectively sell our shares at the call's strike price. Now if the short put is in the money, then we'll essentially buy another share, another 100 shares of stock at the puts strike price. So basically, if the stock price increases significantly, we'll have to sell our shares at the call strike price. And if the stock falls significantly, we'll purchase more shares of stock at the put strike price. So the covered strangle is a really good strategy for those who wish to sell their shares of stock at a higher price, but wish to buy more at a lower price. And all the while, if the stock price remains between the short strikes, you'll collect a significant premium and you'll just keep reducing the effective cost of your long shares. Now in terms of assignment risk, a covered strangle trader can be assigned on the short call if it's in the money or the short put if it's in the money. So if you get assigned on the short call, you'll effectively sell your shares of stock at the call strike price. And if you're assigned on the short put, you will buy 100 shares of stock at the puts strike price. So let's go ahead and look at a covered strangle example trade. So here we have a hypothetical option chain and from this we're going to construct a covered strangle position. So let's assume the stock price is trading for $200 when we enter the trade and we're going to buy 100 shares of stock for $200 per share and then we're going to sell the 210 call and the 190 put for a total credit of $8.09. So we're going to collect $3.78 for the put, $4.31 for the call, which brings our strangle credit to 809, which brings our break even price on the trade to 191.91 because we're buying 100 shares of stock at $200 per share and we're collecting a premium on the strangle of $8.09. So 200 minus 809 gives us 191.91. So let's look at the expiration risk profile graph of this position. So here we're looking at the short put strike price, the short call strike price, and we can see the initial stock purchase price of $200 and our break even of $191.91. So here we see that if the stock price remains right at $200 through expiration, the short call and the short put will expire worthless. And since we collected a $8.09 credit, our profit at $200 is going to be $809. So if the stock price is right at the purchase price, then we'll have a $0 profit on our shares, but an $809 profit on our strangle. So we can make money even if the stock price does not move. Now, if the stock price falls to $191.91, we'll have a 
eight, $8.09 loss on our shares, but we'll make $809 on our cover on our strangle. So the stock price goes to 191.91. We'll break even because the profit from the strangle will completely offset the loss on the shares. Now, as you'll notice, the profit and loss graph starts to get steeper and steeper at any price below 190. Now that's because at any price below 190 will effectively be long 200 shares of stock. So at expiration, if that short put is in the money, that short put's position delta is going to be plus 100, and the position delta of our long stock position will also be plus 100. So at any price below 190, we'll start to lose $200 for every $1 decrease in the stock price at expiration. And as we can see, our profit potential is capped at any price over $210. So if the stock price rises to $210, we'll have a $10 profit on our shares and the strength will keep the strangle premium of 809. So our net profit if the stock price rises to $210 will be $1809. So $1000 of profit on the long stock position and $809 of profit on the short strangle. So this really just sums up that a covered strangle is a very bullish strategy because if the stock price collapses, you have significant loss potential on the downside because not only do you own 100 shares of stock, but you also are selling a put option against that long stock position. So when the stock price decreases, your potential losses on the downside start to accelerate because if you get a sign on that short put, you'll be long 200 shares of stock, and that's a very bullish position. So the covered strangle is a bullish trade that has a lot of profit potential if the stock price remains between your short strikes, but it has a lot of downside risk because you're doubling up on your bullish trades. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some covered strangle example trades. So the first example we'll look at is where a covered strangle brings in profits while the stock price remains between the short strangle strikes. So here's the setup. The initial stock purchase price is $212.44, and we're going to look at selling the 219 call and the 201 put with both of those options expiring in 63 days. Now we're going to collect $1.75 for the call and $0.83 cents for the put, which brings our strangle credit to $2.58. Now our break-even price in this trade is our share purchase price of $212.44 minus the $2.58 strangle credit, which brings our break-even to $209.86. Now our maximum profit potential is the 219 short call strike minus the 209.86 break even price which is essentially the the share purchase price and multiplied by 100 gives us a max profit potential of $914. Now our maximum loss potential is the combination of the maximum loss on the long stock and the maximum loss on the short put. So the maximum loss in this case is the 201 short put strike price minus the 258 strangle credit plus the share purchase price of 212.44 times 100 which gives us a maximum loss potential of $41,086. Now keep in mind that this maximum loss potential only occurs if the stock price falls to $0 which means the company has gone out of business. Alright so let's look at this strategy through time. Okay, so on the top portion of the graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call strike price, the short put strike price, and the break-even price of the strategy. So as we can see here, the stock price remains between the short strikes the entire period, and the stock price ends pretty much where we bought the shares, which is right around 212.44. Now on the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the profit and loss of each component in the covered strangle. So we're looking at the P&L of the long shares, the short strangle, and then the two combined, which is the covered strangle. So as we can see here, since the stock price is remaining between the short call and the short put through time, that strangle is going to decay over time, and that's going to lead, lead to profits for us since we sold that strangle. So as you can see on the bottom part of the graph, we have steadily rising profits on the short strangle, and if we look at the relationship between the P&L of the long shares and the covered strangle, we can see that the covered strangle outperforms the long shares because we have that profit component coming from the short strangle. So the short strangle profits are offsetting any of the losses on the short on the long shares 
and they're actually giving us a little bit of a profit boost at the end there because the stock price remains or the stock price ends unchanged from where we bought it but since we profited from that short strangle the covered strangle position overall is profitable so this just shows you that if the stock price remains between your short strikes then the covered strangle position is going to outperform a buy and hold position of 100 shares all right, so let's go ahead and look at an example where a trader realizes the maximum profit potential on a covered strangle. So here's the setup. The initial stock purchase price is $82.09, and we're going to look at selling the 95 call and the 67.5 put, both expiring in 88 days. So we're going to collect $2.54 for the call and $3.05 for the put, which brings our strangle credit to $5.59. So our break-even price in this case is the share purchase price of $82.09 less the strangle credit of $5.59, which brings the break-even price to $76.50. Now our maximum profit potential is the short call strike of $95 less the $76.50 effective share purchase price, or the break-even price, times 100, which brings us to a maximum profit potential of $1,850. Now our maximum loss potential in this case is the short put strike price of 67.5 minus the 559 strangle credit plus the 8209 share purchase price multiplied by 100. So that brings our max loss potential to $14,400. So that will occur if the stock price falls to $0, which means the company has gone out of business. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of this covered strangle as the stock price changes through time. Okay, so in the top part of the graph, we have the changes in the stock price, and we can see the short call strike price, the short put strike price, and the break-even of the covered strangle. And in the bottom part of the graph, we can see the profit and loss of the covered strangle components. So the long share position, the short strangle position, and the covered strangle position, which combines the two of those. So as we can see here, the stock price takes off significantly and rises above our short call strike price of $95. Now, we know that our covered strangle's maximum profit potential is $1,850. Now, as we can see here, the stock price is above our short call strike price at expiration, which means that is a scenario in which we'll realize the maximum profit on our covered strangle. So, as we can see here, the profit on the covered strangle rises to $1,850, and, you know, it can't go any higher than that, so that's where it stays at expiration. However, the profit on the long shares is actually greater than the profit on the covered strangle because the long share position actually has no limit to its profit potential. So this is one example of how a covered strangle is profitable but not as profitable as it would have been if you just owned the shares without selling any call or put against it. All right, so in this final example, we're going to look at an example where a covered strangle position suffers significant losses as a result of a decrease in the stock price. So here's the setup. Initial stock purchase price is $636.98, and we're going to look at selling the 725 call and the 570 put, both options expiring in 74 days. Now we're going to collect $19.60 for the call and $13.92 for the put, which brings our strangle credit to $33.52. Now the break-even price of this covered strangle is the share purchase price of $636.98 minus the strangle credit of $33.52, which comes out to $603.46. Now the maximum profit potential on this trade is the short call strike price of $725 minus the effective share purchase price or break-even price of $603.46 multiplied by 100, which comes out to $12,154. Now our maximum loss potential in this case is the short put strike price of $570 minus the strangle credit of $33.52 plus the share purchase price of $636.98, all multiplied by 100, which comes out to $117,346. So as we can see, we have significant loss potential if the stock price goes to zero. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens to this covered strangle position as the stock price changes. All right, so in the top part of the graph, we have the changes in the stock price. We can see the short call, short call strike price, the short put strike price, and the break-even of the trade. And in the bottom graph, we can see the profit and loss of the covered strangle components. 
So as we can see here in the top graph, the stock price starts to decrease a little bit and hits our short put strike price, rallies a little bit off the strike price, and then just collapses down to below $500. So that is not an ideal scenario when you have a covered strangle because you own 100 shares of stock and you also are short a put. So that's the combination of two bullish strategies. So in the bottom graph, we can see that as the stock price collapses below $500, we have a significant loss on the long stock position of 100 shares, but the covered strangle actually has an even larger loss because that short strangle is losing money as well because that short put is now in the money. So that short strangle that we sold has increased in value significantly, and we also have a large loss on the long shares. So when you combine the losses of those two things, the covered strangle is down almost $20,000 in this case, while just the long shares are down $15,000. So this just shows that when the stock price collapses, a covered strangle will have more downside risk than just owning 100 shares of stock because a covered strangle combines a short put position with the 100 shares of stock. So a lot of downside risk with a covered strangle. And in this case at expiration, the short put is in the money. So since that's the case, a trader who held this this covered strangle through expiration would purchase another 100 shares of stock for $570 per share. So if you didn't want to pick up another 100 shares of stock, you could just close the short put at expiration and you would just keep your 100 shares of stock and the short call would have expired worthless. So let's go ahead and recap the summary of main concepts from this video. So a covered strangle is a bullish trade that consists of simultaneously selling a strangle and buying 100 shares of stock. Unlike a normal strangle, a covered strangle has no upside risk because the short call is covered by the long shares that you own. To close a covered strangle before expiration, a trader can buy back the short strangle and sell the long shares. So you never have to hold a position to expiration if you don't want to. Now if you're assigned on the short call, the long shares the trader owns are called away. Now if you're assigned in the short put, the trader will purchase another 100 shares of stock at the put's strike price. So as a result, covered strangles are ideal for stock investors who wish to sell their shares at a higher price or buy more shares at a lower price. The strangle premium is kept while waiting for either of these two outcomes. Thank you so much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive all of our new videos as they are released.